Uh, thank you very much, and thank you all who are attending. Um, so we are reporting at this meeting the uh, results of our study of GMI 1070, um, which is a new, uh, a new drug that is being developed to treat vaso-occlusive crisis and sickle cell disease. Um, sickle cell disease is the most common genetic disease seen in the United States, where it affects approximately 90 to 100,000 people, but worldwide it affects millions. Um, in the United States, it costs our healthcare system about $1 billion a year, um, and uh, we see somewhere between 75,000 and 90,000 admissions for acute painful vaso-occlusive crisis among this patient population. Um, indeed, these crises are the most common and essentially the archetypal uh, presentation of sickle cell disease. Nevertheless, um, up till this time, treatment for these crises or VOC in sickle cell disease remains only supportive, focusing largely on using narcotics for pain symptom relief and then other supportive measures part some of which are used to counteract the ill effects of narcotics. Um, the uh, uh, glycomimetics um, conducted several early phase clinical trials preceding the one that I'm going to report about today, um, showed that this uh, drug could be administered safely, safely and therefore, um, and also uh, supported some preclinical studies in mouse models of sickle cell disease and showed that their drug could restore blood flow in the mouse models. And therefore, uh, they sponsored this study, which is now concluded, exploring the safety and possible efficacy of GMI 1070 in patients with vaso-occlusive crisis in sickle cell disease. Um, the study approach uh, was fairly standard, prospective, randomized, multi-center, double-blind study. It was an adaptive study um, that was changed, uh, several parameters of which were changed due to um, observations made during the course of the study, and ultimately enrolled patients ranging in age from 12 to 51 years. Um, the primary endpoint of this study was time to resolution of VOC, and this had a somewhat complex um, definition uh, that included uh, components of decreased pain scores, uh, um, termination of the need for intravenous opioids, as well as agreement um, of the patient and the physician that the patient was ready for discharge and actual discharge. Um, these endpoints uh, were used in a kind of either-or setting and represented pragmatic, clinically meaningful endpoints that reflects real practice um, and also uh, required only minimal documentation above and beyond what is normally done. Other um, endpoints studied included safety and other measures of treatment efficacy, which included the um, amount of opioid used by patients and the length of hospital stay. So uh, this is um, the major result of the study, which is the time to resolution of vaso-occlusive crisis. Um, and you can see that the red line um, it represents the patients who received drug and the dotted blue line, the patients who received placebo. And uh, <coughs> the uh, Median time to resolution of crisis was um, reduced by 63 hours when comparing the drug and the placebo. Um, and uh, the, res the uh, change in mean time to resolution was 41 hours. And while these were not statistically significant, as you can see, the difference is actually quite large. Um, the uh, secondary outcome of uh, opioid use was also studied and again showed a very large difference between the GMI 1070 group and the placebo group. Um, again, here the uh, lower line is the GMI 1070 representing lower use um, uh, on an hourly basis, let's see, here, uh, compared to the placebo group. And also when uh, total opioid use was calculated, 
the total opioid use for the GMI 1070 group was actually reduced by 83%. Um, and that was statistically significant compared to the placebo group. Um, we also looked at time to discharge, um, and this was reduced uh, by um, a median and mean of 84 and 55 hours, so that's more than two days in round numbers, um, and, uh, and this was uh, close to clinically significant. But again, what one thing to note is that um, this was a change that started quite early um, within about 48 hours um, after treatment, and this was uh, similar to the graphs I showed you um, for the other endpoints, that the separation uh, occurred within generally the first two days of hospitalization and treatment. Um, so conclusions in brief um, is that use of GMI 1070, which was started early in the course of hospitalization for vasoocclusion, improved every efficacy outcome measured, and the other ones will be um, described more fully in the uh, presentation on Tuesday. And in some cases, these achieve statistical significance, but in all cases, the differences between the control or placebo and the um, drug arm were quite large. Um, among the effects were decreased time to resolution, decreased length of hospital stay, and decreased requirement for parenteral opioid analgesia. Um, safety data, which I haven't presented here, um, showed uh, a, a benign safety profile in the population study. And therefore, together between the efficacy and the safety data, um, we feel that these results are strong, uh, strongly in support of proceeding with a phase three trial of GMI 1070 to demonstrate uh, statistically significant efficacy um, and to hopefully uh, bring to clinical practice a new treatment for vasoocclusive crisis, and as Dr. Tisdale mentioned, one that would be directed toward pathophysiologic mechanisms as opposed to symptoms. Um, currently, Glycomimetics, the company that developed this drug, is collaborating with Pfizer in the development of such a phase three study.